an event leading up to our entry into the war. Well, what are the causes? Why are we Americans on the march? Is it because of... Pearl Harbor? Is that why we are fighting? Do you have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to a major circulation American journal. We do have people who submit pieces to other to American journals. Do you have any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks? This, I think, gets into the kind of uh, getting into the details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into in an executive session. Do you have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to the national news services, AP and UPI? Well, again, I think we're getting into the kind of detail, Mr. Chairman, that I'd prefer to handle in executive session. I thought that it was a matter of uh, real concern that planted stories intended to serve a national purpose abroad um, came home and were circulated here and believed here because uh, this would mean that the CIA could manipulate the news in the United States by channeling it through some foreign country. Now we're looking at that very carefully. The gray cover. He turned the docket round and pushed it gently across the desk to Bond. The red sans serif letters, still damp, said, for your eyes only. In one of the books you have Bond referring to uh, his own basically dirty life. Well, of course, spying is a dirty trade, and uh, we all know it. Khrushchev has said so, and um, so is Alan Dulles. Well, why do you think uh, a hero who engages in a dirty trade and leads a basically dirty life has become so popular with the uh, reading public? Well, um, it's very difficult to say. I think because perhaps the books have pace and plenty of action, and um, Espionage is not regarded by the majority of the public as a dirty trade. They regard it rather as a sort of, uh, uh, very romantic affair, you know, since the first days when they spy from the other side, lifted up the tent flap and listened to the plans of the Arab chieftains and tried to get away with it. Spying has always been regarded as a very romantic one-man job, so to speak, one man against the whole police force or an army. Some of the papers and some of the documents that are in the archives are, are there but are withheld from public view by the FBI, the CIA, an organization with which you have some experience. Is there anything in those which uh, years from now when they may be released will upset apple carts? Oh no, I don't think so. No, I think everything that really is, is vital insofar as forming a judgment as to what really happened uh, has been made available. Uh, at CBS, uh, we uh, had been contacted by the CIA. As a matter of fact, by the time I became the head of the whole news and public affairs operation in 1954, the ships had been established, and I was told about them and asked if I'd carry on with them. Say that continues today? Well, I, yeah, I would think probably for a reporter it would continue today, but because of all of the revelations of the period of the 1970s, uh, 
It seems to me that a reporter's got to be much more circumspect in doing it now, or he runs the risk of uh, at least being looked at with considerable disfavor by the public. I think you've got to be much more careful about it. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This particular this project is, is really very interesting from the official cooperation standpoint because we don't confirm or deny that we have a training facility. When we are looking for people in the clandestine service, we're looking for people who really think and live outside of the box who are very autonomous, very self-contained, and yet very much team players, people who can deal with the ambiguous gray areas of life. Our cause is just. Our enemies everywhere. Some scary stuff out there.